Excellent. Thank you. Up next, we have uh, DF. DF, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi, Dr. Barnard. I am a big fan of yours. Uh, I've been collecting your books and thank you for uh, everything you do for the planet, for humans and for the animals as well. Uh, I have yeah. a couple of questions. Um, I, I was surprised to hear that heme iron can it actually exists in plants because I think uh, at least one uh, plant-based burger out there uh, claims that they extract heme iron uh, from soy. I, I don't remember the name of that. It's a like hemoglobin or something like that. I was surprised to hear that. Um, and if that's so, do we have enough evidence to show that that kind of heme iron that exists in plants, it's okay for humans, unlike the, um, the heme iron that exists in meat? Uh, my second question is, is there any way through nutrition to increase brown adipose tissue versus white adipose tissue? Um, thank you very much in advance. Okay, well, those are two great questions. Um, the, what you're thinking about is the Impossible Burger. Uh, the Impossible Burger was, was launched for one purpose, and it's actually really good for this purpose. Um, it, it is designed to convince heavy meat eaters that they could still get all that greasy taste without meat. And so what they did is they simulate the taste of a, the greasiest hamburger by taking um, plant-based proteins um, and throwing in a lot of grease into it, uh, more than you should be having. And they add a uh, leg hemoglobin, leg as in legume, as in bean. Um, and it's a genetically, if I understand correctly, it's a genetically engineered product um, that is supposed to give it the same taste that bloody tissues have, uh, to put it kind of bluntly. Um, and I think that the, the Impossible Burger does a good job of simulating meat. A lot of people will go to Burger King and instead of the Whopper, they'll get the Impossible Whopper and they think, gee, this is amazing. It's vegan, but it's very tasty. Fair enough. Um, but it's a transition food, meaning that once you've gotten the transition uh, away from meat and you realize you don't actually need meat, transition away from this product too, so that you're choosing foods that are lower, much lower in fat and don't have the coconut fats and things that, that are gonna cause your cholesterol level to be higher than they really should be. Um, does that hemoglobin that's a plant derived, does that really matter? No, probably not. Um, I don't think it frankly matters with regard to taste and it won't affect your health. The amounts are really, really small. Um, uh, with regard to brown fat and, and white uh, fat, um, what you're going to see on a plant-based diet is that really both diminish. Um, and I don't think you're going to see a lot of dramatic changes there one way or the other. That said, what we do see, uh, what a lot of people are thinking about with these different kinds of fat is they're wondering if they affect metabolic rate in one way or another. And we do see that when people go on vegan diets, their after meal metabolism is boosted just a little bit. I don't think that's because of brown fat. I think it's really because there is less fat in their cells, in their muscle cells. And that in turn causes their mitochondria to, to do better. So that's probably the real secret there. Dr. Great, thank you. And up next, <clears throat> we have Wendy L. Wendy, go ahead and unmute yourself, please. And we'll have you ask uh, Dr. Barnard a question. Let's see, Wendy, if you're able to unmute yourself. Oh, we... hi, sorry about the delay. Sure. Hi, Wendy. Uh, hi, hi, Dr. Barnard, heard your presentation several times over the years are just wonderful. I just have two questions. One is, um, I was recently diagnosed um, with prediabetes, though, um, so, but I think I probably can, probably went a little bit off my whole food plant-based during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a part of me that is concerned about eating too many carbs. I mean, I'm making my lentil, um, um, let's see, lentil um, split pea soups, you know, with lots of vegetables. I, I know how to cook whole food plant-based, but I, a lot of these things do have carbs, you know, the yams. So that's my first question. And the other second simple question would be, how often should one be monitoring B12 level? Okay, great question. Um, carbohydrate is your natural fuel. 
carbohydrate means starch. So the starch in rice or in beans or in a sweet potato. Um, if you could look at that carbohydrate molecule under a powerful microscope, all it is is glucose molecules joined together. And in your digestion, you have enzymes that have been waiting for that to arrive. And what they do is they clip those glucose molecules apart. They go into your bloodstream and then insulin at the surface of the cell, as you remember from my lecture, it takes those glucose molecules and they go into your muscle cells and they go into liver cells. And the glucose also goes up to your brain and it powers your brain. And all of those parts of your body are delighted to have that glucose. You know what? It's their favorite fuel. So starch isn't bad. Starch is a good thing. And glucose comes to us in starches. And it also comes to us in natural sugars, like the fruit sugars and apples and oranges and others. It's all a great thing. But what's gone wrong? What's gone wrong is that books have gotten on the market that say carbohydrate is the devil. And they're trying to push ketogenic fad diets. And so they say, you shouldn't ever be having apples. And you shouldn't be having sweet potatoes. You shouldn't have oranges, you shouldn't have bananas. And they take all the fruit out of your diet. And if they take away all your fruit and all your noodles and all your starchy vegetables and all your beans and everything else that has carbohydrate in it, they've taken away about 60% of your diet. And as you lose weight, they say, isn't that impressive? Well, you could take out 60% of anything and you're gonna lose weight with it. And it's not a really healthy way to go. But anyway, here's, here's the point is I think they've kind of poisoned our discussion. They made people think that carbohydrates are bad for us. Carbo uh, carbohydrates are healthy for us. Now, carbohydrates can be bad in the sense that if you take grains of wheat, grind them into flour, and then mix them with a whole lot of butter and make them into cookies, that's not so good, um, mostly because of all the butter and shortening that got put in there. But the carbohydrate itself is your healthy natural fuel. So um, if you're having sweet potatoes, root vegetables, grains, beans. Frankly, as long as you're eating, you, you stop eating when you're full, those are the best foods for you. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans. Um, you asked about vitamin B12. Most people never really do check their vitamin B12. And if you are not symptomatic and your routine blood tests all come back normal, talking about your hemoglobin and hematocrit, your doctor's probably not even gonna bother testing it. If you don't supplement, go get tested but you should be supplementing vitamin B12, no, really no matter what. If you haven't been, go get tested. And of course, if you have symptoms, your doctor will test you, but otherwise most people really don't get tested really very often at all.